Hi, this is Phil from Straight Jacket Productions, coming to you from the Geek Room, deep within the heart of a Borg cube. This is the first of a two-part video uh, where I'm going to be completely restoring this mask Rhino vehicle. It is my old Rhino. Uh, I've had it for 30 years. The stickers, as you can see, are completely knackered. Um, some years ago, I attempted to pull it apart and re-chrome elements of it with a can of spray paint. Um, with limited success, so I have this piece here. You can see I was quite pleased with the coverage actually um, However, uh, I couldn't get most of the bits off because I chickened out and that the spray paint never really delivered that reflective quality that we expect from this toy so um, I'm briefly going to talk about how I got it apart all the pieces and then the second part of this video is going to be uh, basically promoting the new sticker kit I've designed for this toy which is a um, an upgrade, a faithful recreation and update to all the labels that come with it with a bunch of extras as well. Um, so we'll have a quick look at the chrome. Um, first of all you've got the wheels. Um, these actually aren't too bad but I am going to mask them off and, and try to, to give them a square. I, these back ones uh, came off fairly easily. I can't pull the front ones off. Um, I don't want to damage my Rhino. I know it's battered and had it, but I am very attached to it. So uh, we can take this part off. So to take this part, there's uh, six screws, or is it seven, underneath the vehicle. And then that will take the back part off, which I've just lifted off. And then you'll be left with this piece. That will lift out once you've unscrewed it. I've had this out already. Oh yeah, it's the ejector seat, so be careful. So, I've got some nice new stickers to go on the dashboard and inside that. Right, and then this, again, just comes off. So I'm gonna have to peel this off. My new sticker kit will come with replacement stickers for the grill and these awkward pieces, which are difficult to get to. So yeah, just briefly with these, I can't, easily pull these off. I don't want to risk busting my rhino so I'm just going to mask off. Same with these. If I can find a way. I mean it seems that that would push push out but this plastic's 30 years old so with the smokestacks and the front wheels I'm just going to mask that off. As you can see I've also got some clean up work to do because when I did my bad sp spray upgrade I chickened out and didn't pull half these bits off so I've ended up getting the silver spray paint all over the chassis and the nose like here so it's it's a real mess it's a real junker at the moment this rhino so i'm gonna have to clean this up with thinners obviously i'm going to be removing these dodgy stickers to make rooms for my new new ones um so let's have a look at the chrome so you've got this bit which comes off pretty easily that's like the steps the foot plate thing uh, on the nose of the vehicle we'll talk about these so you've got the engine bit Basically these are clips, and if you can squeeze the teeth on the inside with a pair of needle nose pliers or, or something similar, I found that the engine part, which I've just shown you, came out quite easily. What else we got? So we got these horns on the nose. These, these were quite difficult. They just clip in. So by giving those a squeeze on the inside, those teeth, you can see them poking through there. With the pliers, I was able to ease those and whatever these are, I think they're some sort of gas cylinder. I was able to get those out fairly easily. First ones that will come out will be these, and these are the buttons. Um, they're the first ones that sort of will pop out, and as you can see, my spray paint job has, has really come off there. And that gives an indication as to how worn the chrome on this Rhino really was um, before I attempted this in the past. Um, it was all like that, it was basically gone completely transparent. Um, what else? You got? So yeah, we've got, now the more tri difficult parts of these, you've got these big, which I imagine are, are fuel tanks, and they come off here. Now, to get those off, actually, you just have to be brave. I got there a knife, and I did actually use this one, and I, I just eased that in there, and, and they just popped off. So, I wasn't too worried about those, and they're definitely in need of it. Again, you can see, the reflective element, which wasn't exposed to the sun or play wear for years and years, um, is still there on the inside, but all this was, was just absolutely gone. Got a fair bit of clean-up work to do. On the doors, there's the door. You've got 
The mirrors, they come off fairly easily. Don't break them though. For me, easily the hardest part to get off was this, which is that part. It goes above the windscreen. Um, now if you're re-chroming, you are going to want to pull this off. As you can see, I didn't last time. I've done a terrible job. Now the only way I could get this off was to take, if we look inside it, to take a scalpel and and shave the edges of both these two pegs, which hold it sort of down, and these two pegs at the front. But crucially, it's intact, and the bit that sits on the cabin is uh, pristine. So that's the chrome parts. So how am I going to do this? Um, since spray paint doesn't work. Now I've become aware of this. It's called uh, Molotow Liquid Chrome. This is just the bottle of the paint. It's supposed to be really good. There are plenty of other YouTube videos where people have um, used this. They're airbrushing it on. Um, so this is what gave me the idea. I am lucky enough to own an airbrush. Here it is. Uh, it's about 25 years old. Uh, it's called a DeVilvis Sprite Major. I have used it with varying degrees of success but I am in no means an expert and that is why I decided to make a video today um, just, to, just to track my progress um, and so you can see what a junker I started off with and hopefully um, by the time we've done everything it, it should look pretty spanking especially with the new stickers I'm super excited about them um, and I will be talking about those more in the next video. How am I going to spray so much chrome in one go? bought a number of these little crocodile clips and what I've done is I've got my trusty slab of concrete and rock and glue gunned these onto those so I've got a number of those, I've got two of these soldering stands so what I'm going to be doing is arranging our chrome pieces um, I also need to mask this off and the wheels so a little bit of work to do before we actually go and do the painting but yeah that's the intro, this is what I'm doing, and this is how I'm going to try and do it. Okay guys, welcome back. You rejoined me outside. It's December, it's absolutely freezing. As you can see, I've arranged my chrome pieces. I've masked off uh, this part. I'm also going to spray this, this tip bit, because that's a bit that pokes through the grill, so it might as well be chrome. You can see the wheels, hopefully. Smoke stacks. I've actually jammed a pebble under this piece of masking tape between these to keep these in the far outer positions I can. It's a little bit of give. So I've got my airbrush set up. So this is the stuff. Let's open it up. I'm going to try it undiluted first. So see how it goes in there. Okay, it's pretty runny. I filled that about a third full. It looks uh, looks cool. It looks like mercury. Wait for the airbrush to build up a bit of pressure. No, it doesn't want to come through. This airbrush is one that sucks air up from underneath, sucks it through. Sometimes the ones with a pot at the top are better. That's uh, that's not pulling through at all. There's a, a little spatter there, but we're going to add a little bit of thinners. That's, that's about half full now. Give that a little shake. Ooh. Oh, it's squirted everywhere. All over me. So I forgot to put my finger over the top. Okay. I don't mind being covered in paint for my art though. Right, that should be shaken up. Let's try it now. It should be drawing now, hopefully. Okay, guys. This is this is just a couple of minutes later. I've just upped the power on the airbrush, and it's it's coming through an absolute treat. So I'm just gonna make a start. I'm gonna pop that back on. Yeah. Now I'm told the answer is to wet the surface. Let's, and allow it to. Yeah, there we go. 
not seeing the reflectivity just now. I assume it'll, yeah, it does look good though. Don't know if you can see. Wow, it's steamy up in here. I'm glad I came upstairs downstairs. Right. Wow. I think I need a mask. I'm just going to go and get a mask. Okay, I'm uh, now wearing a face mask, so we'll pick up where we left off. So here's that grill. You only really need to do the, the tops of these buttons, because they're the only bits that actually show. There you go, I don't know if you got that, hopefully. Just check my mounts. Yeah, I've run out, so I'm going to top up. So I'm just going to put it in neat this time again and hopefully yep power will bring it through okay we haven't done this yet yeah that's actually looking great so I didn't need to dilute it what I needed to do is just up the power on the airbrush yeah look at that that's actually beautiful give it a good old session of that Wow, super pleased with that. That looks great. I'm sorry the light's bad in here. I tried to wait for some daylight. But it's England in December, so what are you going to do, eh? I'm trussed up like an Eskimo in here. Let's do this piece. Try and get it in. Yeah, that's coming up a tree. That's an absolute treat. Yeah, they're looking, they're looking pretty splendid actually. So I'm going to try again with some of these other pieces. So let's give it a good soaking. I think is the answer. Yeah. Seeing the mirror reflection come in. So let's try this again. Beautiful. Yeah, that's that's really working well now. See, I, as I've avoided doing the middle here, so you can see the reflective qualities appearing. Now some of the advice I've had has said that this should be left to cure for up to a month, which is the other reason I've, I've left it down here. I have to say I'm super pleased so far. See I'm doing in my little pot. I'll use another top up. Yeah, I'm getting through this stuff. I think a lot of it is circulating in this room. I don't know if you can pick it up. Squirt some more in. So pick this one up this time. You really want to soak that. I'm sorry I'm out of shot here. I've got to lean in to get it into the camera. It's coming up pretty nice. You want to give it a good soaking so it's got a chance to pull, which kind of goes against most airbrush etiquette, actually. But it's working and this, there we go, look at that. Wow. I don't know if you can see the difference between this horn and this. Yeah, no, they're coming up an absolute tree. I'm actually amazed by how good this stuff is. Beautiful. Okay. Let's uh, go around and do these again. Yep, beautiful. Look at that, that's super reflective now, as are these buttons. Look at the difference in those two now. Amazing. I'm now thinking firecracker, bulldoze, 
I've got a bunch of them with duff chrome. And now I've got a good technique to fix them all up. It seems to work. Oh, I ran out of paint again on those. But yeah, they that's that's transformative. Absolutely amazing. A bit more. I'm going to end up using all this stuff. This stuff is about 17 quid. I bought it on eBay, a couple of quid delivery. It's certainly the right stuff for the job, I can confirm that. Fabulous. Absolutely amazing, actually. Yeah. Can you see this? Revisit this large piece. Now this piece is going to take a lot of paint because it's textured. Best results holding the airbrush about 10-15 centimetres from the item. I don't really need to do the underside. I want to waste the paint. Make sure I get in all these little crannies on this piece. First impressions of this paint, fabulous. This Rhino, together with my new sticker kit, is going to look hopefully the dog's bollocks. You'll note I've forgotten <laughs> the ATV. So I think I'm going to go and find it and have a look, see what state the wheels are in, because I may as well mask them off and, and do it too. But yeah, fabulous results. I hope you agree. Hello, you rejoined me again. My ATV had fallen down the back of a, a cupboard. So it's here. One wheel wanted to come off, the other didn't. So I'm just going to uh, give these ones a, a spray as well. Here's this wheel. Not too bad actually, but desperate for a... Okay. Give it a good soaking. Yeah. You want it to pull for that real shine. Yeah, look at that. Okay, I've got my ATV. I've masked off the wheels. Beautiful. Oh, it's chucking up some throwback there. Okay guys, I apologise for that. My camera battery died just as I was finishing off the ATV. But some time has passed. It's been well over a week. I did remember this piece. So these are now touch dry. I've come out. It's quite a nice day. They're glinting in the sun. They're touch dry. They're, uh, I'm really pleased with them. Now, I've rewatched what happened and maybe when I inadvertently, you know, topped up the thinners, I've coated these in something that has allowed it to pull and, and give such a good result. I don't know if I've just gotten lucky, um, but these are now ready to go back on to Rhino. I still have some work to do. Uh, I still have to clean up my plastic pieces. Uh, this has got prototypes on it, so all this needs to come off. I've got to clean these up today. And then I'm gonna be introducing you to my new Rhino upgrade pack. Um, so join me in the next video, and we're gonna be showing you some of these new cool stickers, where to put them. Uh, I'm going to clean those up then. So the next time you see me, I'll have uh, something that's uh, looking a bit more like a rhino because I'm going to put it back in such a way that it would be the minimum uh, you'd have to pull it apart to place all the stickers. So uh, a few of these chrome, bits of chrome in the wheels, they'll be back on there. Um, so thanks very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the very next video.